Hello, welcome. How is everyone doing today? This is Patty Bennett. I'm excited that you're here. We are going to be talking about soft pastels today. Welcome. If you're joining me live, pop on and say hi, just so I can see that I'm in the right place and somebody's here. <laughs> it's always great to know that I'm in the right place and somebody's watching. <laughs> Let me just... I'm pulling you up on my iPad, and hey, yay, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is froggy today. We have a lot of smoke here, and um, it's just froggy. <laughs> but welcome, everyone. Today is Friday, August 20th, and we will be chatting about different ways to use the soft pastels. I have wanted to use these for weeks. I've had them since the new catalog came out and I just needed to like make myself sit down and play. <laughs> so I thought I would share some of the fun ways that I've been using them with you. If you're watching the live, you should see a red live button up there. And if you are not seeing that button, you've caught me on a replay, maybe on my blog, maybe on YouTube, maybe on Facebook, <laughs> wherever you're watching. Welcome. Hello. I am just going to give everybody a moment to find the live video, and then we will get started. I'll give you a little peek. We're going to be looking at how to make these cards with the soft pastels. Let me know if you have used these yet. In the comments, would you just give me a comment um, or a heart or a thumbs up? Let me know if you have explored playing with these yet. I'm curious, and I will take your questions at the end if there's anything else that you maybe wanted to know about using these. I'd just like to know, how many people have used these? Thanks, Robin. Hi, Linda. Hi, Marjean. Debbie. Dorothy. Hey, everybody. Hi, Lori. Hi, Patricia. Patricia says not yet. Hi, Susan. Tammy has not used them yet either. Hi, good morning, Barbara. Marjean hasn't used them. Hi, Karen from Central New Jersey. Okay, Jacqueline says yes with water. I played with water with them also. I was going to show you that at the end, and that's going to be a separate video because I realized that there's so much you can do with these that it might kind of take forever if we try to fit everything in one video. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah, a lot of you are saying you haven't used them. Heather says not brave enough. Good. So that's... Um, that's going to be our goal today is just jump in and basically we're going to be using them with Versamark and also just sort of going direct to paper. That'll be what we explore today. And then with another video, we will be using wet mediums and other tools to color with the soft pastels. So let me show you in the catalog in case you're looking for them, this is what it looks like on page 126. It doesn't actually show the packaging. I'll show you. This is what the box looks like. You might remember, I had to actually look on my blog, um, and I did a search for pastels. <laughs> 2009 is when I was blogging a lot with pastels. <laughs> And do you remember, it was like a, a big case, the lid lifted up, and there was little squares. It looked kind of like an eyeshadow palette, and that is what our pastels were years ago. So the new configuration is this box, and you can see that the pastels are now like a stick, okay? And the lid... oh. Wait, that one's full. The lid slips on, slides on like this. And just a little handy tip I'm going to show you. I just taped a die cut to the back of mine so that I would have a little tab here to pull out because it was a little bit hard to 
slide it in and out for me. I, you might notice this. I added dry, and I have another he set here that says wet. The reason I bought two sets, okay, well, number one is because it's only $9, like uh, not a huge amount of money in the scope of life, right? But also because I remembered when we had that older set of pastels in the, the case that I was talking about, if you used a blender pen, which I'm going to uh, call wet. I'm going to differentiate this as wet because this is a wet tip. Or if you used something like um, a water brush painter that had water in it or anything like that, and you used it on the pastels, it kind of eroded them. And it sort of made, you know, just like it when you use eyeshadow and it, it makes like a dent and you get down to the pan. That's sort of what it reminded me of. So I decided with these, I'm going to keep one package for dry, which basically would be like rubbing a dauber on it, or if you wanted to use a Q-tip and rub on it. So that would be considered dry to me. And then I have a second set that I am going to keep for using when I use anything wet or with water. So that's just why you're seeing two sets here. And I wanted to explain that, the difference of what I was doing. The other tip I wanted to give you, you can see on the side, I used my brother P-Touch labeler. And I just typed out in the order that Stampin' Up! had them. I didn't do the full name, but this is enough to remind me of what these colors are and where to put them back. <laughs> but also just like if I'm doing a video and I forget perhaps maybe what the purple color was or whatever, I can glance down and I can see on here what the colors are. So that's a tip for you as well. Let's look at different ways that I have used this. I also just wanted to let you know that on pattystamps.com, which is my, my crafting and stampin' up blog, I will have all of these as well as these two cards on my blog tomorrow. So tomorrow will be Saturday, August 21st. And if you're looking for these, I will link them in the description once they are live on the 21st. So you don't have to memorize any of this. You can always wait and do screenshots or save or pin these images tomorrow. I wrote down what I did after I did each one because I knew that after I did several different things, I would forget exactly what I did. So they're a little bit cryptic, but we're going to go through it and I'm going to explain to you what I did. <laughs> I decided since my favorite way to use these pastels back in the day, so like 2009, 2010, when I was using the original set, was with Versamark, and we called it Poppin' Pastels. Since that was my favorite way to use them, I decided that's how I would start out with this today. And that's what this video will kind of focus on is these, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways that I used them. That's what we're going to explore today. So we better get going because this is a lot to work on, right? <laughs> so let's just, I, I don't even know if I put these in any order, but let's just kind of go in order and I'll show you what I did. I have lots of fabulous scalloped contour die cuts. Thanks to Tammy, my die cutting fairy. She keeps me well stocked. I love that, and I use um, these a lot. So that way, as I'm experimenting and I finish something up, I can put it right onto a card. Ta-da! We are going to stamp this in Versamark ink. This is, you might have seen in the beginning of the video, the Delicate Dahlias stamp set. And this, I should mention, is a free stamp set that you can earn with your $100 online order during celebration. So if you're watching live or soon after this goes live, you have until September 30th, 2021 to earn this set free. So when you put in a $100 order, you could select this set. I love this set mainly because I love flowers. You know that if you follow me. 
we are going to use the outline and the filler piece, both the flower and the leaves on our projects today. But before I stamp this, I want to show you, this is my little palette. And this is a silicone craft sheet. Let me just get rid of that extra dust. Hang on. There we go. I only put it in this little tray just because I wanted to be able to like lift it up and move it around my desk without uh, the dust kind of going all over. And I want to show you how I got this, what this is, and why we're using this. So when you are using Versamark and you want to apply this chalk to the Versamark, there are a few different ways to do it. But the best way that I found, and I'm sorry I don't remember who I saw originally do this, but someone showed this on YouTube and I thought this was a great tip. I tried it. It works fabulous. We are going to take the little spatula piece that comes on the Take Your Pick tool and I am just going to scrape into or onto the silicone mat sheet and you can see I'm getting dust. Yeah, it sounds kind of funny. Sorry about that. But you can see that what I'm getting is basically the soft pastel dust. That's what we're going to do. So I probably should have had a bunch of these uh, scraped, but it doesn't take more than just a minute. So you can just bear with me. That first one was the Poppy Parade. This is the Mango Melody. Now we're going to do a little bit of Daffodil. I also experimented just scraping these right onto the image. That also works. So if someone reminds me as we're stamping, we can also do that. Ah, Tina says, great technique. We did that for a bingo. Awesome. Uh, that was Granny Apple Green. Personally, I think it's probably the best green that Stampin' Up! has ever had. This one is um, Coast, no, Night of Navy. Night of Navy, even though I, I don't know, if you ask me, it looks more like kind of a Pacific Point, but doesn't matter. It's a beautiful blue. And then the last one that I'm doing today is the Coastal Cabana. So now I have my palette of chalk excuse me, pastel dust. Uh, you do kind of want to have uh, a wipe or a Kleenex or a tissue or a something just to sort of keep your hands clean because I noticed what was happening was I got some of it on my hands and then I would go to pick up a white piece and then I had a little red splotch. You know how that goes. It happens with ink or it happens with everything. <laughs> so I'm just going to scoot this over to the side and we are going to stamp in the Versamark. And then I'll show you what I did with the sponge daubers. Sorry, there's, do you get like this? There's just stuff all over your table and you're looking and of course it's right in front of you, but you can't see it because you're just overwhelmed with all the stuff on your desk. Mm, I might be the only one. I doubt it. <laughs> okay, so that was just Versamark ink going to stamp the outline of the dahlia onto my scalloped contour die. Uh, Tina says, I agree, love Granny Apple Green. Hi, Alice from Indiana. Thanks for joining today. So we've stamped in Versamark, and now, oh, by the way, you might have seen over here on the edge of my screen, I have the eight colors that we have here, sponge daubers. I bought a pack and a half, well, I bought two packs. This would be a pack and a half. I just wrote pastels on it. I'm going to dump these back in so they don't get mixed up with the ones that I use on ink pads. I honestly could not tell you if that would be a problem, but my gut says, you know what? Just keep them separate. It's not hugely expensive. Let's not um, muddy them up between chalks and ink. So there, this, this is going to be a separate set of daubers. I use the Poppy Parade, one of my very, 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 very favorite colors. And I did the center. Then I grabbed, and I also label these with my brother P-Touch. I grabbed the Mango Melody. I'm going to dab in there. I think 
hope this is on camera. I think you can see what I'm doing over here. I'm just dabbing and picking up that chalk on the sponge dauber. And then I'm going to go around. And do you remember this? Did any of you do this pop in pastels? And if you're a demonstrator and you did this at a class or a workshop and everybody went, oh, whoa, <laughs> because it's like, it's magic, right? And then I'm going to do just daffodil right around the edge. The daffodil and the mango are really, really, really close. There's not a huge difference in this color, but I'm just doing the three colors nonetheless. <laughs> yes, everybody's saying yes, I, am, I remember that, or yes, I did it. So what we're doing is we are getting this, I'm going to call it powder, from the pastels to stick to the wet Versamark. That's what we're doing. And you can see that it's created some extra little dust, and I'll show you what I did to get rid of that. I'm just going to add a little more of the poppy in here. Okay, so that's technique number one. And I ha just have a little garbage can over here. I'm going to just take this and dump off. Do you see that little extra bits of the powder? I'm just going to dump it into my, tap it in my garbage can. I think I will just wipe this away so I don't put my hand or my future pieces of paper in it. And then what I did was I just kind of pounced on just to set that color. I really don't want to use a spray fixative on these. So I experimented with this. You can see that there's the color on the tissue. And I really found that if you just kind of pounce that on there and then find a little clean spot and I just sort of rubbed towards the center. I don't want to like rub across onto the white. So I'm just sort of rubbing onto the center, just picking up any extra. Then after a couple times of that, you really stop picking up color. And I think, see, it just sort of stops picking up extra color. And then I think it's just kind of done. It's it's set. So that is, um, oh, was there a question about, let me, here, hang on, let me go back here. <laughs> Tammy, you're so cute. She says, I can't handle the amazingness. Um, oh, Vicki said, how did I get the, the color onto this silicone mat? So I have, where did my tool go? Here it is. Take your pick tool. This is the spatula end. I do want to say that I did try these. Uh, these are the little spatulas we sell for the, um, what is it called? Paste, the embossing paste. It didn't really work. It needed to be more of a I don't want to say sharp because this really isn't sharp, but just a more of a, a thinner metal edge. The plastic just didn't really work as well. So let me show you, Vicki. I took the stick and I just scraped like this and it makes the powder um, go onto the silicone mat. And I only have it in this little box just so I can move it around here for our video. It's it's not like it, you know, needs to be in that. So that is the Poppin' Pastel technique. So here's here's what I wrote. I don't know. Let's see. I hope it's it's close. Outline image in Versamark, dauber on chalk dust on from silicone mat, and then I okay, I, I wrote this is kind of funny, dabbed on Versamark. What I mean is I dabbed with the Kleenex. I don't know. It's really kind of cryptic, but I think you get the picture, right? Uh, were there any questions on that particular method? The only other thing I did on the other one was I added the green leaf, but I think you kind of get that, right? You get the uh, you get the the technique. I think. I hope. <laughs> Hi, Krista, Barb, Patty, Maxine, Mary, Jennifer, Arlene, Carolyn, Kathy. Hey, everybody! So glad you're here. We are. Look, exploring the Stampin' Up! Soft Pastels if you're joining in late. And the first technique we're doing is what I call the Poppin' Pastels. And this is on the outline image from Delicate Dahlias. Now we're going to do it with this image because I think this is 
the wow. So here it is. Actually, I think I did. Yep, I did it in, in a the blue combo and in the yellow and poppy combo. Since we just used this combo, would you like to see it in the blue and, well, it's the two blues? Let me know. Comment and let me know. Let's see. Could you put the extra chalk shavings into containers. Yes, Sue. And you know what I was actually thinking about doing? Hang on here. Let me show you something. I just have to grab it. You've seen me use these great little crafty storage jars. So this is what one jar looks like. And they have a, a nice screw top lid. They're from Stampin' Storage. I've shown you these many times. And I was thinking that you could fill those little jars. Or if you have extra of the Stampin' Up um, embellishment packets, what about scraping them into there? So I was thinking about that. And then you could just cover it up. The only thing you need to be careful of is like if you're lifting off the lid, you don't want to jiggle it. You don't want it to like poof or anything. But Yes, I do think that you there would be some solutions like that that you could do. Yeah. Oh, okay, let's see. Let's see. Karen says, yes, show me the blues. Linda says, so pretty. Krista says, blue. Jacqueline says, blue. Blue, blue, blue. Okay, let's do blue. Let's do blue. All right. And you know what I can hear? This is so funny. I know you can't hear it in the background, but on our screen door downstairs in the backyard... I can hear the squirrels climbing the screen door. They are begging for peanuts. And it's making me crazy because I do not want them to try to get in. And I feel like yelling at them to get down. But then you all will think I'm crazy. Crazy squirrel lady. <laughs> so let's just hope they go find some of their buried peanuts in the backyard. <laughs> Okay, this is the, I don't know whether to call this the solid or the filler image, but you can call it whatever you'd like, but the more solid image from the Delicate Dahlias set. And then I did the Coastal Cabana in the center. Hey, let's mix it up. Let's save that for the outside. Let's do it opposite. Let's do the Navy in the center. And let's do the Coastal Cabana on the edge. And you can watch the magic happen. Isn't that so cool? It's so amazing how it just pops, that poppin' pastel. It reminds me of when I was a first, actually before I was a demonstrator, so I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for over 26 years. So before that, when I was just a stamper, and the first time I ever did heat embossing with gold powder, and I heated it, and I watched it um, melt and sparkle, and I was like, oh, oh my gosh, right? It's that same kind of feeling. <laughs> All right. So... Same thing that I did before, after I used the daubers, I'm just going to kind of pounce and try to set that color, really make that color set into the Versamark with a tissue. Go to a clean spot, do it again. Oh, I forgot to, forgot to kind of, yes, I hear you down there. Stop, get off the screen. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're still climbing the screen. Oh my gosh. Okay, so there's the blue. And I wanted to show you something. This happened to me yesterday as well. And I wasn't paying attention. And um, it happened just now. So I want to show you what happened. When I was inking this stamp... If your stamp is like that, do you see how there's it's at the edge of the ink pad? 
Okay, so if I got ink like that, do you see what happened? I got that line right there because there was that line of ink. And so you do need to be a little bit careful when you are inking with the Versamark. Now, I want to try something. I have some Q-tips over here because another way that you can add color would be to, you know, get color like that on your Q-tip. So I want to try something. I want to see, can we sort of rub that line away a little bit? Oh, we can. Oh, look at that. I saved the day. Woot! Well, it's still there a little bit, but it's not as bad. But the reason I pointed it out to you is that I didn't want this to happen to you. And if you're not careful, you could actually have like a line over here and a line over here. But what you're after is more of a smooth look like that. So there's the cabana and the navy, one in the middle and one on the outside. And I think that looks amazing. And then I really love it when I'm just going to do one of these to show you. Oh, I, I, yeah, I do want to show you this because I wanted to give you this tip. If you ink the leaf afterwards and then you put the green on the leaf, you will make sure that the blue is not going to stick to the leaf. If I had inked those both right at the beginning and added the blue powder or dust or whatever you want to call it, it could have stuck to the leaf and then you would have had a partially blue leaf. Not that that's a crisis, but I love Granny Apple Green and I would have wanted it to be like this where it's nice and bright in green and not like partially blue and partially green. So there, there's a tip. Good. Thank you. Stacy says, I love all the tips. Oh, Sylvia says, squirrels like dried corn stalks. Yes, I have. Um, I have given them those. We get them at the feed store. <laughs> okay, Patty is saying, if you touch the pastel when it's done, does it come off on your finger? So let me wipe my finger. Let me get my finger clean. Okay, so no, no. And I think the reason is, um, like I showed you, I was like pouncing this in and really trying to like set that uh, I, well, I want to say ink. It's not ink. Set the powder into the Versamark ink. Yeah. You could spray this with a cheap hairspray. You could um, use, there is a fixative that you can buy at the art store. It's just called a matte fixative and you can spray these when they're done. But really, I think if you do that pouncing, you'll find that it's kind of setting that color. Alrighty, so let's see. Let's look at this next one. I'm sorry. Let's see. When you put the green on, does it? Yes. So let me get this over here. Uh, well, no, it really doesn't look bad. So let's see. Who is this? Was it? No, it wasn't Vicky. Was it Robin? Robin. Robin was asking, did the green get onto the paper? It did a little bit, but I don't know if you saw me. So I was just kind of dabbing off on from the cardstock toward the color and then it just sort of takes care of it yeah so it's it's fine and let's see could I I don't know that the heat gun would do anything to set it Lucy it might um since it's not wet since the Versamark is wet but you're sealing it in uh I don't know I don't know. I'm not positive. We are going to look at this next one now. So I've pre-stamped in black and I stamped. Oh, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I hear you get off the screen door. Not that they understand English, but oh my gosh, I can still, it's driving me crazy. Sorry. It's really distracting me. Okay. This one, let me show you what I did. So after what we just did, where we did the solid image and we pounced the ink on, then I took the outline image 
inked it in black, and I stamped it on top so that you turn this into this. So I don't really think I need to demonstrate that for you. Although, you know what? I'm going to stamp it on the blue one because then we'll have one that's in blue. So let me just get the Bursa mark off and get my black memento and we'll stamp the black on top. And I have to kind of look here and see if I can get a feel for which direction is which. Which one do I want to line up here? I know which one. This is the one I look for. I'll show you. See that little funny skinny one that just kind of goes whoop like that? And it's right here. That's the one I look for to line up. Oh dear. Hang on. i got to stand up. Look down over the phone. Okay, I think we're going to be close. <laughs> and I really love how, oh, excuse me, I'm like breathing in a combination of this dust and the smoke that's in the air. <laughs> excuse me. I really love the way that it looks just with the colors that we did. So here's the difference. And then stamping the outline just makes it really really vibrant and really defines those petals but don't i think this is really cool too what do you think i i like them both a lot i was also thinking possibly that outline in like misty moonlight or coastal cabana or bermuda bay you could do that as well but i really think it's pretty so you can kind of you can play with that technique whether you want it just this or if you want the outline as well oh thank you thank you that you're saying that you love the black outline over it so that is that next one that i did that's basically that so now what we're going to do is with a pre-stamped outline image we are just going to take our um daubers and Similar to what we did when we had the, the, the Versa mark, but we don't have any Versa mark on here. This is just outline on cardstock, and we're just going to dab and color and add color. And this, you can see from this finished one, is a super, super soft look. This is not for the time that you want a really bold colorful image. This is for when you just want something that's really soft and really just muted and just, you know, something very gentle. And I'm going to do something else right here. I'm going to show you another technique. Let me get rid of that dust. So up here, I just want to show you, I had mentioned that you could use a Q-tip. You can use, I have this kind for when I do my nails because I, I like just, you know, kind of go around the edge with this kind of a Q-tip. But you could also use a regular Q-tip. Either one will work. And if you just want to grab some of that pigment, you can just scrape it on with a Q-tip. Now, if you were trying to color this entire image, that's going to take a while with a Q-tip. But I just wanted to show you that it does work. It's about the same intensity as doing it with the daubers. So there is that technique. And I'm just thinking here with a smaller area that maybe that would be your ticket. So, for instance, the leaves... If I try to do that with the sponge dauber, I might be going outside the lines quite a bit. So that might be where you would want to do that. So there you go. Here, This one is a much softer look. We used the daubers and we used the Q-tips. And I'm just going to kind of dab. And so there's that really soft, soft look 
just directly onto the paper. Let's see. Um, silver. Oh, yes, you definitely could emboss with silver on the blues and with gold for the yellows. Thank you for that suggestion. That is awesome, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, Kathy says, love the black outline. Uh, Heidi says, they both look great. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Great comments. Great suggestions. So here, we'll just hold it up closer just so you can see a little bit of a softer look, right? Let's see what was next on here. Oh, blender pen. All right. So we have another one that I've pre-stamped just to save a moment of time. Hang on one second. Sorry, I'm covering up my ink pads because the last thing I want to do is put my hand or something else in them. wanted to show you blender pens because this was another technique that I used 10, 12 years ago with the other pastels. But remember at the beginning, I told you that I labeled one set for dry, which is what we've been doing so far, dry. I've labeled my other set as wet. So it may not make that much of a difference, but I just thought, you know, like I said, it's $9 is not the end of the world. I sort of just wanted to protect my set in case this wet medium was like if it started to disintegrate it or I don't know. You know, I just didn't know what would happen. And I didn't want to ruin a set of pastels and then wish that I had done it differently. So you can see here that coloring this way is sort of like coloring with markers or uh, Stampin' Blends. But something to remember about blender pens is that it is going to start kind of fraying or pilling your um, paper. So this is not something that you want to do where you're like going over and over and over and you're trying to blend the colors and and blend and blend and add and blend. This is just sort of like a one and done. And I'm going to glance over at comments in just a minute. I just want to get a couple of these petals done to show you. So this is just sort of a, you know, a quick, like I just want a couple of colors on here. Um, I'm not being super worried about any kind of shading. Okay, so there you can see that you get a much bolder look than the dry method, but not quite as bold as if you colored with your Stampin' Blends. So let's see, let me, I see some hearts. I so you're still there. Okay. <laughs> and with blender pens, if you've not used these, these come in a pack of three. So you would have six tips to use. Generally, what I like to do is I like to keep a tip that's for reds and pinks, a tip that is for yellows, a tip for purples, a tip for blues, and a tip for greens. And that way I don't have to constantly clean it off and go to a new color because what you're doing is just sort of wasting that glycerin um, compound that's in there. So that's what I do with blender pens. And that is how I achieved that one. So blender pen, dip in the chalk, and then color the outline image. Any questions on that one? Um, can you do that with Wink of Stella? That is a great question. Let's grab one. I'm just going to shake it over here so I don't make you dizzy. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to, yep, I've got some going here. All right. So if we, let's, let's go for the red. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it picked it up. Well, my goodness, yes, you sure can. Look at that. That totally works. What a wonderful suggestion. Who said that? Chris Ann, thank you. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Let's see. If you get them wet, you can scrape the spot. Oh, okay. So 
uh, who Jacqueline is saying that. So if you wanted to only buy one set, and you can see now I've got Wink of Stella on there. It got a little bit wet from the blender pen. So she is saying that I could take my take your pick tool that I was using earlier and I could scrape that off. And that's very true. You could totally do that. The other thing you could probably do is flip it to a different side and say like, okay, that's my wet side. That's my dry side. You could do that as well. I just, again, like I said, for $9, it didn't seem like that big of a deal to get two sets. So that's what I did. But now that you have me thinking about this, I want to I'm going to do the leaf. Oh, that is beautiful. Uh, I don't know how much the shimmer shows up on camera, but this is just like the most beautiful, soft, shimmery look. And you really couldn't get that light, soft of a color with ink because it would it'd be too, um, too dark. But that is really beautiful. So there we go. That is a fun technique. Thank you, Chris Ann. That is wonderful. All right. So there is the technique with blender pens. And then the I think this is the last. Yep, this is the last one I have to show you. You can actually just take your, um, the stick, wait, wait we're going to go back to the dry one. Hang on. There's our set for dry. And you can just take this and you can color right onto the paper. So do a little bit of the navy in the center. And we're going to do the cabana out here. And then you have your choice. You could go to a Q-tip and you could blend. You could take your uh, dauber and you could kind of smush slash blend. <laughs> you could probably also grab your blender pen at this point and color. I'm not going to do it on this one because then I'll have two completely different looks on one card. But I think the Q-tip is probably a really good option for this. Um, I also used my dauber, uh, as you saw me do with the first couple of samples, just to sort of press that down into the paper and get it to set, get that color to set. I think that that helps. I'm going to tap this extra off. So, let's get another clean. Oh, that's my last Kleenex, so that probably means that we're done. <laughs> Okay, so you can see we're getting a little bit of the color. So as we do that a couple more times, we should probably, yep, almost no more color. So that means that we've set that color and we've taken off the extra dust part. So that's the direct to paper with that. Wow, so we covered lots of techniques here. Like I said, tomorrow, which is August 21st, all of these will be on pattystamps.com and it, it'll have this little description. Plus I typed a description just so that it was a little clearer because I know these are kind of cryptic. So all of these will be there for you to see tomorrow if you want to pin them or you want extra instruction. But I wanted to show you what I did to finish these scalloped die cuts off into cards. So this one kind of cracked me up because, like I said, this was like 12-ish years ago that we did a lot of this pop and pastel. And what was the other thing that was popular? Did we round the corners of everything back then? Yes, we did. And we've kind of stopped doing that. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to go off of this scalloped corner here and I'm going to round the corners. I used the trio, um, detailed trio punch, I think it's called, that has the corner rounder on it. And I rounded the corners, just a throwback to way back when. <laughs> 
So all I did was I used my foam adhesive sheets. I cut it up and I put my foam adhesive behind the scalloped contour die. And then, can you see the sparkle? I used the ombre specialty paper i love this stuff so it comes in these four colors in one package and you can kind of see here how it goes from light to dark so that's the ombre so that happens in the mango the grape the poppy and i think this is navy so i cut a piece of that as my middle matte layer and then I just put this onto a side fold poppy parade card. And this one has the blue ombre specialty sparkly glimmery paper. And it's on a Pacific Point card base. These two greetings are from Shaded Summer. This is a stamp set in the annual catalog. And you might remember that one of the free gift choices during celebration is the Summer Shadow Dies, which coordinates with this set. So the set is something you would purchase. The dies are something that you could request as your free gift from Stampin' Up! until, well, until they sell out or September 30th, 2021, whatever comes sooner. So I used the birthday and the love you friend on these two cards. And they are just on die cuts. I, it's going to be on my blog tomorrow. I think this is ornate frames. I think it's in one of my lovely little packages from my die cutting fairy. Tammy is a lifesaver. I have all my die cuts up here. And I added some of the in-color jewels. I just can't get enough of these. I can't even tell you how many packs I have used. Probably 10 at least. I love these. And I put the papaya ones on here. And I actually used the um, Evening Evergreen on here. But don't they look almost blue? I think they're gorgeous on here. I think it's a really pretty compliment. So let me just check here for comments. And if I missed a question, this is your time. Could you please type in your question and I will see it now. Uh, yes, Tammy, we need another craft day. Oh, thank you, Robin. She says, I love watching you and learning new things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Susan, yes, we did corner around everything, didn't we? <laughs> You're welcome, Karen. A baby wipe to help set the chalk, says Michelle. I will have to try that. Thank you. Yes, it's a dry Kleenex, Stacy. Yes. Um. <laughs> oh, somebody was saying she's going bankrupt when she's watching all these videos. Yes, the Q-tip, Kathy, does give a nice soft look. Exactly. I'm just, uh, yes, they are happy cards, Anna. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. She says gorgeous. Tina says beautiful. Susan says gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Vicki says they came out beautiful. Thank you, everyone. So again, it's um, pattystamps.com. I forgot to write it down for you today. Is my blog. And I will have these, all of these on my blog tomorrow, August 21st. Oh, I forgot to show you the other things I have played with, which will be a separate video. This is on watercolor paper and it's a wet technique with a spritzer. So we will be exploring that as well as you can use an embossed image and use your pastel and rub right on there and you can color it'll color just the raised area we're going to explore that in wet and in dry so that's going to be coming up in a few weeks we will be talking about those techniques oh tammy you're a gem thank you she typed my blog for you yes the contour dies are for the scalloped images Someone asked earlier if these pastels are like the old ones. So I, I talked about that in the beginning. They're similar. Uh, the ones that we used to have were little squares, almost like an eyeshadow palette. The consistency is very similar. But the old ones we had, you know, are, were very thin. 
So imagine an eyeshadow palette. You use it for a little while, you go through it, you hit the pan, and it's kind of done. I think this is going to last a long, long time because of the bulk of product that you get in this stick. So yeah, similar, but um, similar outcome, different presentation. How's that? <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. Thank you. I hope you have an awesome weekend as well. Let me see. Bonnie, you're welcome. I love doing these free classes on Fridays for you. By the way, that reminds me, uh, no live next Friday because Stampin' Up! has their Leaders Backstage event on Thursday, Friday, Saturday next week. So I will be participating in that. I'm actually a speaker for that. I was asked to be a speaker for the Leaders event, and I have pre-recorded my presentation, which is a big relief because then I don't have to worry about technology going wrong or anything. But I will be participating in that event next week. So no live next week. Yes, just wanted to remember to tell you that. You are welcome, everyone. Diane, Judy, Krista, Robin, Tammy. Thank you, everybody. Oh, good. You know what? That was my goal, Tammy. She says, I'm no longer intimidated. You know, it's just play, right? It's just paper. It's it's a, a dauber. It's, it's not brain surgery. <laughs> so I hope that you will enjoy playing with that. Yes, true, Chris Ann. I think I think some people were mentioning embossing earlier. So emboss in black and then rub the color over it. Yes, I think that would be gorgeous. Um, Vicki is asking if I'll be participating for in on stage. I have not been asked. I know that they really like to try to mix it up. It's been a few years since I've been a presenter. They like to go through sort of a rotation of leaders for presentations. I've done many presentations at uh, when we used to have convention, when we used to have leadership, regionals. I've done many for Stampin' Up! over my 26 years. And this, I guess, was my time. They asked me again. And then um, we'll see. I don't know who will be presenting for on stage. Oh, Lisa, yeah, we're just wrapping up. So feel free to watch the replay. Oh, Marcia, maybe you'll have to watch the replay. Um, I only used the Q-tip in a couple spots. We mostly used the daubers today. All right. I will see you all in two weeks. <laughs> and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm so thankful that you joined me. Thank you so much. By the way, you know, if you need a demonstrator, if you need supplies, if you need a catalog, everything can be found at my blog, pattystamps.com. There are tabs up at the top and you can use those for ordering or for getting catalogs or asking me questions or whatever you need. So thank you again. And I hope that you will all join me again in two weeks when I'm back live. See you soon. Bye-bye.